Here now is Faith to Live By with three verse 19 reads, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty rules. It's the Lord, you, his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Heidi Taves comes and she sings Psalm 103. <laughs> The Bible has the answer. We search the scriptures to find answers for the questions which you have provided. Question number one, how were the animals for sacrifice fed and watered during the years of the Exodus, those 40 years, particularly where did not just the animals come from, they came from Egypt, but or where did the feed come from for those animals? We go to Exodus chapter 3 and we find that Moses was pasturing the his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. A shepherd does not take his flock where there is no uh, foliage for those animals to feed, that would be utterly foolish. So Moses particularly takes the animals under his care 
to that place where later on he would meet with God and receive the tablets, and he meets God, first of all, in Exodus chapter 3, and there is the burning bush. Wilderness, that Hebrew word, should be understood not as a desert uh, region that lacks vegetation, but rather as an uninhabited region. And so when Moses was taking the children of Israel and they were going about in their wilderness wanderings, it was simply that there was no one about them, but that there was yet feed for the, for the cattle and for all of the animals, just as for the people, the people were receiving manna. Some have suggested that perhaps the animals also partook of the manna. That is completely unclear in the scriptures, but we do know that M Moses brought forth under God's command water from the rock when there was no water. And so God was providing and God was seeing the people along and making sure that provision was there for one and all. Question number two, may prayer be directed to all three members of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We need to understand the role of each of the members of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each of them are perfectly and fully equally God, and there must not be any hierarchy put to this. Each of them are fully divine in every, in every way, in every part of their character, and fully deserving of worship. But to whom do we direct our prayer? Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, is Jesus giving what we call the, the Lord's Prayer, or the prayer that Jesus gave as the, the perfect sample prayer. And he begins by saying, Our Father. That is the direction that the prayer goes. And so we pray to the Father. But then in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, on uh, two times, Jesus points out that we are to pray in his name. He says that we are to present our requests in the authority which is in his name. They, we come with, with a connection, sort of a foot in the door. We have Jesus Christ, who is our great advocate, and he is speaking on our behalf. So we address the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, and then Paul speaks in Romans chapter 8 about the Spirit who intercedes on our behalf. And this is Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, especially in the same way the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And so the Spirit is the one who comes alongside to help. That is the very word paraclete in Greek that is given to us, the one who comes along and helps us. So prayer directed to the Father under the authority and in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit taking that and energizing it. When we are stumbling along and we can't find the words, the Holy Spirit comes and grabs a hold of us and propels us along. Let me also mention in John chapter 16 and verse 14, the Holy Spirit is the one who Jesus said, he will glorify me. The Spirit delights to take the things of Christ and make them real to us and turn the spotlight upon Jesus Christ. Now, is it wrong to say, Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for how that you have opened my eyes to Jesus Christ? By no means. Is it wrong to say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you have died upon Calvary's but to each one we give our thanks and praise. But this is the scriptural teaching which is laid out for us to address the Father, to come where we could never possibly come in our own strength or in our own authority, in our own name, coming right into the presence of our Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, our great elder brother, 
with the Holy Spirit right at our side and dwelling within, sending forth that prayer that there might be power, that there might be godly connection, and that it might grip the heart of God and that we might have that hearing that we desire. Thank you for the to us and we will use it as we are able. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. The full group comes and they sing Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, and that is followed by the male quartet, Revive Us.
all of the music which you are enjoying on today's program is included on this brand new CD from the Faith to Live by Musicians. It's entitled, To God Be the Glory, and is praise and exal exalting the name of our great God. We would be happy to see that a copy of this brand new CD is in your hands just as quickly as we are able to send it to you. We have also been talking to you about my brand new it's the letter of First Peter, 12 sermons, which I preached in my home pulpit this past in this book that we would be happy to see is also in your hands for your blessing. Ask for the CD, ask for the book. They are sent out free and postage paid. We do not charge for any of the resources that we provide. If you that is your choice and that is completely separate, but these are sent free and postage paid that you might be encouraged and built up in your faith. Our mailing address to live by, Box Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may find it more convenient to call our toll-free number and that is 1-833-4FTLB, that is 1-833-3852. Powering now come, and again on the, on the theme of praise and exalting our Lord, they sing, Hallelujah, praise the Lord.
I would want to speak with you about how that you can let not your heart be troubled. In John chapter 13, the crowds which had gathered around Jesus in hundreds and even thousands, they were gone. Jesus had set himself aside. You might say he had isolated himself from those dozens and hundreds and thousands and he was with 12 men by themselves we don't even have any mention whether there were any servants there in the upper room but John chapter 13 we are ushered into that isolation place and we are gathering with the master and hear what he has to say First of all, he institutes the Lord's Supper and he actually takes the towel and basin and he washes the feet of the disciples that are gathered around the table. Jesus, the Master, you would expect the very last one. Menial work, but he an example of how that he has come to serve and how that they are to serve one another. Then he predicts his betrayal. And at this time, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, exits the scene. The other disciples do not know why Judas leaves at this time. Perhaps it is because he is the treasurer of the group and he has the money bag and he is to give something to the poor or he is to buy further provisions. But Judas exits the scene. Judas knew why he was going, and the master knew. None of the others understood until later why this time goes away. And then at the conclusion of John chapter 13, Jesus says to Peter, and I'm sure this was a lightning bolt, Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me not once or twice, but you will deny me three times in the next few hours that you even know anything about me, that you have had any acquaintance with me whatsoever. You who have walked perhaps the closest who have had a friend, even the disciples, you will deny that you know me. And Peter, of course, denied it vehemently. But then Jesus leans in and leads into John chapter 14. And perhaps you have heard these words at a funeral or in some other setting. I often use these words in a memorial or in a funeral. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your heart be troubled. Now, Jesus knew what they did not. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen to him. He knew, the, he knew how that he would be arrested and how that he would be taken for a mock trial. And then he would be led away to be crucified. He knew that those hearts gathered around that table, 11 of them, that they would be absolutely destroyed. So he says, heart be troubled. How easy it is for our hearts to be troubled. How easy it is for fear to come and to grip us in its icy chill. Struggle to break free. How easy of psycho babble. He does not say, pull up your bootstraps and be men. But he rather says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, as you should, as your parents took you to synagogue through the Old Testament. You believe in God, he says, believe also in me. Jesus talks about his father's house. Who better to speak of heaven than Jesus himself? For he had dwelt there for all eternity, and he was going there once again. He says, in my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I am now going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I am going, Thomas I, I've wondered why it was that Peter, he was usually the one to speak up. I think that Peter was still so set back on his heels at this time from what Jesus had said to him that he was absolutely dumbstruck. Thomas is the one who speaks up and he says, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How do we know the way? And Jesus, if you memorize only few verses of the Bible, let this be one of them. I hope you memorize many. Verse 6, be one of them. 
that you hide in your heart and that you have day or night to strengthen you and to strengthen others. Jesus said, and the truth and the life. No one by me. So when your heart becomes troubled, when you become fearful, when you become panic stricken, just as you believe in God, look to Jesus Christ and what he has come to do, that he has come to care for us, that he has come to reveal the Father to us, that he has come to speak words of assurance and of peace, and that he has come that of life, of life everlasting. In John chapter 14, 15, and 16, Jesus is giving his last discourse, his last words of instruction, and he is, he is anxious that his disciples grab a hold of this. He realizes it's at hand. He realizes time is short, and he wants to invite not be troubled. And he comes his counsel, and he comes to verse, chapter 16, verse 33, and this is his last words before he prays for so that in me you may have peace. In Jesus you can have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. That is Jesus' word even today. In me, oh, fix your heart upon him. That passes all understanding today. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The to live by box 426 winnipeg manitoba r3c2h6